Hello and welcome to today's webcast from BICON. We're coming to you from the BICON Institute and the Implant Dentistry Center in Boston. Uh, on the um, left side, uh, we will uh, open a very conservative flap. We will perform the split and place uh, three implants. On the left side, uh, the mesial most implant, the, the one in the location uh, of the first bicuspid, is going to go into the socket of the recently removed non-restorable bicuspid. We will start by making the incision at the first, or excuse me, the, at the, uh, it is actually the first bicuspid ure. With me there. And then in the area of the split, we're going to make the same incision right into that crestal cut. And we will, if you feel any pain, that tissue, as, as expected, is very fly, friable. It's only two-week-old extraction. So what we will do is try to keep as much of it as possible. It will, we will now, in the end, use a uh, collagen plug to close over it. Okay? You feeling any pain? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, suction right there. And no release toward the buckle in this case. Just the extent straight posteriorly will give us enough of leeway to be able to place that. And this is the only flap we will do. So the lingual plate is exposed somewhat. Right? You see the top of the crest, and you see the cut. You see the corticotomy cut right there. So what I'm trying to do is to see if this bone flap will mobilize just with the uh, torquing with the uh, curette. And sometimes that's all that we need. I want to take a um, caudal chisel and split it taking a small surgical mallet okay Okay, so I can feel that the bone is starting to give. You won't have a significant difference in the sound it makes, but you will start seeing that the actual bone plate is moving, and you want it to move as a unit. My goal is to place short implants in here, six millimeter long. No more is necessary. Are you okay, love? Mm -hmm. Good. That's it. Okay, so now we've mobilized it, so you can see the whole plate is moving, okay? Osteotomy will be at a depth of roughly um, 8 millimeters from the crest, and we are right about there now. Okay. That better? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now if you go deeper, it's okay, just don't seat the implant as deep. Okay, zero degree paralleling pin in the first bicuspid. Okay, we'll use that to help us get into that osteotomy. And I don't want to touch the bone at the crest. So if it's touching the bone, the, the bone has not moved out enough yet. So we'll take the curette again and move it back out. The idea is we're going to bypass that split bone, immediately drill into the basal bone. Okay, good, that's it. There you go. So one of the ways I also want to be sure we're at the correct 
uh, level is to palpate. I feel the bone vibrating but not being cut. Is that all right? Good. Okay. One, two. This, un unfortunately, now is going to get in my way for me to, to drill. So I have to remove them. At first, I'll just make a mental note where the next implant has to go, and it's going to go right near that little notch in the bone, posteriorly, if you see it. Right there. You okay? Mm. More water? Is one, two, and three. Okay. This one is easy because it really hasn't hit anything yet. It's still this, the uh, fleshy part of the socket suction. Notice the the difference in speed, and this is why you don't need. And incidentally, also notice how the buckle plate is moving in unison. The key here is to find the initial osteotomy at the base of it. Okay. Feeling that a little bit? Mm. Okay. After the three and a half, I will use the hand reamers mounted on the adapter. And okay, now we're starting to engage the sides of this socket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. The key here is not to allow that flap to get caught on the edge as it can be peeled off of the, uh, its blood supply. There's a floor for this one. Uh, stay away, please. And a lingual wall, exactly what we think we have. And there's also a floor, lingual wall floor lingual wall. We swap and now we have a floor and a buckle wall that has a slight step but no fenestration. Same here. Okay. All right, this is the first bicuspid. It's almost finished. Stay away. All right. Okay, bear with me, You're doing fine. Good. And now we're in. Uh, bear with me, I'm almost there. Almost there, that's lovely. Okay, so that's the four millimeter. And there we go. Okay, thick. All right. Let's finish up this guy here. Bear with me. I know this is going to be it. This is the last one, okay? Bear with me. Doing awesome. Doing great, love. Okay, Sandra. Good. That's it.
Okay. All right, no, stay away. It's your I need to make sure that we have the all of the shavings of bone removed out of these osteotomies. And we want to make sure you have a floor. And we collect all of them. Okay. And the most critical part is this. When we check against and we feel bone all along. Bear with me. Doing fine. Good. And again, if you can see closely, zoom in as much as you can. Please, you can see that this buckle plate is still attached. It's wide open. Okay. One, and this is the second bite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Now, I'm going to take the black uh, plugs out and use the offset driver to seat these implants in all the way. There's one. And we hold the implant together. Two. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. And here. All right, now we cut the black healing plugs and we will seat them here and here. Beautiful. Now we will re remove this. We'll need a collagen plug and we will start packing these together. So as you can see, the gap is only about two or three millimeters. Okay, that's it. So whatever little bit of bone we got is more than enough to cover the shoulder of these implants. And that's all I want to use it for. I don't need to graft because the area in between the implants will have uh, the blood clot. So we're going to bridge the difference or the, that little gap with, co with collagen plugs. Stay out for a minute here. And this I will use a continuous suture because it will apply the pressure a little bit more across without creating a um, sort of a, a circulation compromise at the crest. Okay. Okay. Pad the area so that the bone that is in there over the shoulder of the implant doesn't get washed off. Uh, the implant will integrate it doesn't need to have a barrier function, in other words. Good. Thing about hold it down. Good, good, good. Okay. Do not. It's always not a bad idea to uh, put a couple of interrupted sutures so that your, your entire um, surgical site is not dependent on just one knot to stay secured. Ladies and gentlemen, almost there is one of that uh, collagen plug.
And one more suture. Of course, now that we need it to have a little bit of bleeding, it refuses to do so. And here we are. Careful where you're pushing. I just pull. Good. Can I retract the lid? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm using the inverted figure of eight is because this was an extraction socket. So I want the, uh, the suture to be pulling the uh, uh, collagen plug down also as well as, as holding it in place. So I want the, the actual X of the figure of eight to be inside the socket rather than on top of it. And here we are, last suture. So there you have it, the total time for um, a corticotomy, ridge split, and implant placement is basically what you've seen. Okay, we're all set. Okay, so this is the split and the implants are engaging the unsplit bone and we are about four millimeters away from the, uh, uh, from the uh, mental foramen and from the mandibular canal. So there is no need for uh, steroids. We have the three implants placed in the locations we want. That's a, that actually is a, is a question that's, that seems pretty straightforward. However, it's pretty difficult to answer um, without uh, saying that, you know, we, we've done a few of those, so experience plays a role. The fact is that the uh, osteotomies, um, they, you can't place them in too many locations. First, in this case, we had the uh, uh, socket of the first bicuspid. So that's a given. That's a very good starting point. In, this, in the second bicuspid, we have the vertical cut, okay? And the vertical cut, as you saw, starts at roughly two millimeters to three millimeters from the distal wall of the socket of the first bicuspid. So if we place our implant roughly so it touches um, the end of the mesial cut, so you start at about two millimeters from that mesial cut, you're going to be exactly within about three millimeters of the uh, socket. So that places the two bicuspids like they would be naturally. So those two are easy. The difficulty where, was where to place the molar uh, implant. And the molar implant, basically I backtracked from the back because I had done the calculations when I did the cuts. And I, again, placed it within the um, bone flap itself by going two millimeters anterior or mesial to, to the distal cut. Now, alternatively, you could have had a stent However, the difficulty with the stent is it doesn't account for where you will have split the bone. It will place your osteotomies at the very thin crest, which can then be misleading. It may take you too lingual, all right? And when you do the, the split and you start moving buccally, those distances may change ever so slightly, and they can carry you into the wrong uh, locations. As you saw, I was worried about the uh, location uh, relative to the uh, roof of the submandibular fossa and we checked and we, we weren't in it. So you want to be sure you have the right stance. The uh, four millimeter and four and a half millimeter reamers were hand reamers. Those are uh, the quasi-cylindrical ones that sort of expanded with one corner cutting only instead of two, like in the latch reamers. But they were mounted on a, an adapter, okay, that has a screw uh, top that would then make them adaptable to the latch handpiece because the, the maxilla prevents me from coming in and, and actually doing it by hand. So although it is still a hand dreamer, it works like a hand dreamer um, in some aspects, but it's drilling in full circle, but much more gently than a latch dreamer. So that was, you know, I, I did change those. I don't know if it wasn't that clear, but the four millimeter reamer and the four and a half were both hand dreamers on the, uh, on the latch adapter. Well, the, the waiting, uh, the healing of these uh, implants in the split is actually uh, not significantly delayed because of the plateau design of the implant, okay? The implant is going to integrate by callus formation. So whether you have mobile or immobile bone initially, 
at the base is going to heal at the same speed, provided that the patient's chewing habits and other oral hygiene habits are not going to traumatize the buccal plate. So the short answer is I would wait the same amount of time that I would wait for a type 4 bone, which is three to four months. From Boston, thank you again, and until tomorrow, 4 o'clock. See you. Bye-bye.